Good morning. Today is Monday, the 27th of June, and I come to you after some reflective thought about just stepping up. I, I don't even know if it's more being a man or just when you see a need, just stepping up and feeling it. So I go to, I'm on my way to drop my daughter off for a summer camp. And she's at a prestigious college. And this is her, you know, teacher recommendation, recommending her, her mom following through. And me just, okay, even though it kind of throws off my schedule, I'm gonna do what I gotta do, stepping up. And it's not even an issue when her mom asks me, like, are you gonna be able to modify your work schedule to get, I'm like, it's not even a question. It's for her best interest, like, no big deal. And the old me, I have to admit, would have been like, did you even consider planning this during my time? But, you know, you grow and you do better and you do what's for the child's benefit. But the, that point, I really wasn't, that was the Holy Spirit drop in, but that was really not my major two points. So on my way there, I'm communicating with her mother and, um, well, her mother called to communicate with her on the way there to wish her well and whatnot. And I recognized that I did not, uh, I cannot remember the name of the, the hall on which, I mean, I, I kept thinking of, I mean, my daughter kept saying, <laughs> you know, it looks like the college looks like Harry Potter. And so all the British or English names were coming through and I'm just like, it's not that name. So I asked her mom, like, what, what's the, uh, what's the, what's the name of the, the building? I knew it started with a W, but I kept pronouncing it of something that it was not. And she tells me and goes through a whole spiel of, you know, well, I sent this to you. And I was like, I was just trying to get clarity while driving. And I, you know, eventually sent a follow-up message saying, hey, you know, I, I did, and, and I have to give her credit. In the past, I have not been as much on follow-through as I am now. And I just said, hey, look, I, I stepped up. I did read the information and, you know, I just wanna make sure that we're good and keep in the flow of co-parenting for her benefit and rebuilding the trust that was lost on my behalf on the times that I did not follow through. Because it doesn't take a lot to lose trust, especially when you're dealing with past mates and whatever those dynamics look like. So, moving forward. I was led by the Holy Spirit to reach out to another co-parent with whom we were not on speaking terms at all. And when I tell you, God was like, no, you need to send this message or what have you. And I'm like, it's not gonna be well received. Da -da -da. I'm giving every excuse to God of why I'm telling him I should not do what he you know, he's telling me to do. So this is for my son's mother. And so I'm like, okay. So I send a message and it's in the vein of, hey, look, I saw you at the grocery store and noticed you instantly looked away. And I have to say that I saw you living your dream. Because she always wanted to do bodybuilding or what have you and I mean she looked like she was doing bodybuilding and 
you know, I just congratulated her and told her, wished her well, and that was pretty much it. And I said, I know you're probably gonna block my number or send some form of rejection or put a restraint out on our communication or whatever. I just, you know, it's, it's but it's really just a sincere, hey, I did notice you and I don't wanna act like I didn't recognize you and I'm happy that you are living the dream that you said long ago you wanted to live. So, we got a response back. Thank you and thank you for being a good father to our son. And I'm just like blown away like, wow, I ain't getting cussed out. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I ain't getting no, you know, stop. Yeah. And I was just like, okay, God. Thank you. Thank you not only that you told me, but I did hear you and it was a good follow through or what have you. And my pastor has been preaching about living with no regrets. And I, you know, part of the reason I told her, I was like, I don't want to internalize not communicating with you what was put on my heart to communicate with you. So, you know, that would have been a regret for me. And I mean, cause life is coming and going, like 40 going off. I mean, as we all know, people are dying left and right. Gas prices going up, people getting evicted. I mean, things are just happening that are not what we all would say is an ideal world. Life, it happens. And regularly, I communicate with my children and tell them like, nobody plans on being certain things when they're young, especially when we pass homeless people. I said, nobody plans on being homeless. Nobody plans on being homeless. Nobody plans to be a prostitute, to be a stripper, to be um, a, a drug dealer, to, to, to be a thief. Nobody plans on a lot of these things in life but they happen out of circumstance and just not planning. So I just, you know, tell them like, hey, y'all gotta step up and meet the expectation for your life, for your journey and do the best that you can with the resources, with communicating to family members with taking advantage of opportunities that avail themselves, my son, and that was triggered when my son said, I asked him what he was thinking. He said, honestly, I'm thinking about communicating to people more. And I told him a story about an aunt that I had who was, I think, in her 80s, going on 90, when I was in college, the oldest member of our family, my grandfather's auntie. So, great, great aunt. At any rate, I told him I was within walking distance from her house when I went to college, but I was so involved with what I was involved with while in college, whether it was chasing girls, being in a relationship, doing school work, working, valet parking, cutting grass, whatever it was, you know, just doing so much that I did not take time to just at least once a month go by there and say, hey, how you doing? Or at least call, stepping up. And I was so proud of him of taking that reflection because it showed that he was stepping up and listening to some of the things that I was communicating. And this was a random conversation, but it was a proud father conversation for me. Going back to dropping off my daughter, I had a customer call to ask me to complete a lawn service and the conversation, well, I put them on a monthly schedule uh, because they were having some financial um, hardship with gas prices and every, just everything going up, you know, rent going up, gas prices going up, taxes going up, I mean, whatever, everything's going up. And, you know, that conversation led to people being evicted and things like that and it even got political in saying about, you know, how we vote and 
for whom we vote based on traditions versus looking at like sometimes some people choose the worser of two evils based on who is more in line with their agenda and I'm just going to say that sometimes our mindsets are so loyal to what our traditions say that we can't see past this one issue that we may have with people. And I'm gonna leave that right there. Whereas other people, they they just, they're the popular vote and we go for that. So this conversation is happening in front of my daughter and I, I'm just telling her like, you have to think for yourself and your journey is not always going to be what everybody's going to appreciate.